Hello, Autodesk University Innovation Zone. My name is Andrew Maxey, and I am the founder of Vartega. And I'm going to tell you all about what we do at Vartega, but first, I want to talk to you about traffic. This is a picture of my view as I was driving to my office in Denver. Now, fortunately, we relocated, but I used to get stuck in, stuck in traffic all the time. And certainly, uh, like myself, you would love to get some of that time back if you were stuck in traffic. Here's a video of a Tesla Model S owner doing just that. Uh, now, this gentleman is asleep at the wheel, and though we don't recommend it, uh, we know that this is where the world is heading. Uh, with autonomous vehicles and self-driving capability, we will be able to take a nap on our way to work. Transportation technology is changing rapidly, and we know that uh, Google is working on a self-driving car. Obviously, the Tesla Model S I referred to, and the forthcoming Tesla Model 3 will have their autopilot capability. And BMW is also working on some pretty progressive technology. This is an example of their iNext prototype or concept vehicle that will be composites intensive, hybrid drivetrain, and self-driving capability. Mary Barra, the CEO of General Motors, has been quoted as saying, I believe the auto industry will change more in the next five to ten years than it has in the last 50. It's no longer science fiction to think that we could have self-flying vehicles, like self-flying cars, or even tube travel. And if you don't believe me, here's a headline from earlier this year about what Larry Page is working on in regards to self-flying cars. I've actually seen one of the prototype chassis for this, and it's pretty remarkable to think that we could have self-flying cars in the near future. If you still don't believe me, then I know you're familiar with Hyperloop. Hyperloop is a program that SpaceX is working on that enables high-speed transportation from San Francisco to Los Angeles, or could be the Middle East, or could be Moscow. Um, this will enable uh, transportation that we haven't seen before. Now, all these technologies are amazing. We know that they're progressing rapidly, but there's a material that will enable these technologies to happen, and that material is carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is a very strong and lightweight material. It's like black fiberglass. It's used in various industries such as automotive, aerospace, wind energy, and sporting goods. And this material is woven into fabrics and impregnated with plastic, which is called prepreg. These prepreg materials are formed in different shapes and cured into solid composite parts. Now, this space age material is amazing and enables us to do incredible things, but it has some limitations. First and foremost, it's extremely expensive to produce. Carbon fiber for the aerospace industry can be as much as $45 a pound. Coupled with high scrap rates, which are typically around 30%, and as much as 24,000 metric tons of carbon fiber end up in landfill, or even worse, are incinerated every year. That's the equivalent of the same amount of carbon fiber used in 652 Boeing 787s. That's a lot of material. Now, uh, the challenge we have with carbon fiber is it's very difficult to recycle. It's a composite material. It has these distinct parts. It doesn't melt down like steel or aluminum or other metals. But at Vartega, we've developed a chemistry-based process, process that enables us to free the carbon fiber filaments from the prepreg and turn it into recycled dry fiber. And you can see that uh, our material is very clean. Here's a sample of actually a woven material that we've recycled and freed from the prepreg. This is important because we can then reuse these materials in new products. By doing so, we save 90 to 95 percent of the energy of manufacturing virgin carbon fiber, and this translates into a cost savings of 40 to 50 percent over virgin carbon fiber as well. Now, this is incredibly important because that 24,000 metric tons of scrap I mentioned earlier translates into $630 million worth of lost value. Those are dollar bills we are burying in the ground that will stay there forever, essentially, for a very long time, because carbon fiber is a very stable material. What we do is we take this recycled carbon fiber that we create and incorporate inter intermediate materials, such as thermoplastic pellets for 3D printing and additive manufacturing, which is certainly relevant here at Autodex U University. We can also take these materials, incorporate them into non-woven fabrics. And all of these intermediate materials enable us to lightweight vehicles because these materials can help us reduce vehicle weight, which improves fuel economy and reduces emissions. And the BMW i3 is a great case study of what can be done there. Um, it's important because our fuel economy requirements continue to increase. By 2025, we will have a 54.5 mile per gallon requirement through CAFE. 
And uh, those standards are increasing throughout the world as well. There's a composites institute here in the US that cares a lot about that, and we're helping them achieve their technical goals of recycling and incorporating low-cost recycled fiber in automotive applications. I mentioned the BMW is a, i3 is a great case study. This vehicle is about 10 to 15 percent carbon fiber by weight. And in fact, they use uh, their own recycled material in the roof structure and the rear seat back of this car. This is important because it offsets the weight of the battery pack. It's a fully electric vehicle and improves the vehicle range. In fact, for every 10 percent weight savings in a vehicle, you get about a 7 7% efficiency improvement. That's significant as we talk about the 90 million vehicles we manufacture every year. So we fit in the scheme of this uh, environment. We take the raw material, the, the waste material from waste generators, recycle it using our chemistry-based process, then turn those materials into intermediate products with our partners, which can then go into new, new cured composites. Uh, to demonstrate that, we've developed a prototype. This is our alpha unit. Uh, we've since scaled that up 160 times to our beta unit and are working on uh, collaboration with the Colorado School of Mines to vet this out and get materials into the hands of our customers. And this was designed in uh, Autodesk Inventor. We are now in the process of designing our pilot facility, which will be capable of recycling 100 tons of carbon fiber per year for automotive applications. And this is an example where the concept of our pilot, they're actually designing in Fusion 360. This is incredibly important because we've got a virtual team throughout North America. And our engineers are based in Colorado, but we've got uh, operations folks in Washington State, business development folks in the Midwest. And this enables our VP of engineering to design this in real time, and then the rest of our team can access it remotely, uh, do 360 degree views, provide feedback and comments, about what this means to our customers and how we can actually deploy this at our customer facilities. This is incredibly important because the carbon fiber supply chain is distributed across North America and really across the world. So we can deploy these systems at our customers' facilities, recycle on-site, reduce the logistics and the infrastructure of shipping what is essentially garbage and saving significant costs to do so. The same system we can deploy in uh, Europe as well. We've got uh, an application that we're pursuing there as well. Now, I mentioned uh, we've got our headquarters in Colorado, and we're working on facilities in the Midwest for automotive, Pacific Northwest for aerospace, the Southeast for automotive and aerospace, and then uh, down in Southern California in the future for some commercial aerospace applications or even commercial space flight. And just to highlight the fact that uh, there is an impact beyond even what we're doing here on Earth, as we talk about sending uh, rockets and uh, humans even to the red planet, Vartega has committed to being the first carbon fiber recycler on the red planet. So I know it's a couple years off, but it just gives you a perspective of what we expect to happen with composites, not only in aerospace and automotive, but, uh, but internationally and interplanetary uh, in the future. So I want to leave you with a closing thought, and that's that we can reduce our carbon footprint by increasing our carbon fiber footprint. We do that through lightweighting of vehicles by using low-cost recycled carbon fiber. We keep that carbon fiber out of the landfill and reuse it in the supply chain. And this is important to reduce fuel, uh, improve fuel economy and reduce emissions. And this benefits uh, us in the long run um, on our planet and on Mars. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.